Hey, I just want to welcome you to one of our pro tip videos for relationships here at East Coast Christian Center, where we're just producing several videos to help you in different stages or different phases of your life. We have videos about being single, married, raising children. Uh, we even have one on forgiveness now that will help you learn how to forgive and be forgiving, right? And those are very important things. Uh, I need personally at least an hour of forgiveness videos every day. So this is what's happening right now. We actually did a message together, and we're coming out of that answering more real questions, getting more into subjects that we couldn't get into maybe with kids present in the room. So Marvin, Selena, would you just talk a little bit about what it means to have a blended family. You might be the poster children for that. You are remarried now, and you have uh, adopted children as well. So you have you have like six kids. Is that how many you have? Six kids, adopted three kids from Haiti. Talk to us about maybe the difficulties of what that was like. Yeah, I would say that um, coming into the marriage, uh, being a stepmom and being a mom for the first time and to a teenager, um, the difficult part was that I came in with some pre-existing notions of what that was going to look like. I expected him to think of me as a step monster, and I expected rebellion from him. And it really wasn't like that. There were times it was difficult, obviously, because we were just getting to know one another. But um, over time, uh, because we were Jesus lovers, <laughs> we could not have done this without God. Um, we did trust Holy Spirit to really give us the right things to say, the right uh, way to say things. I had uh, so much to learn. Um, and my son... And, and my, as newlyweds, <laughs> we were very selfish. Yes. Very and, my, and Marvin were very compassionate. Uh, many times Keith would remind me who I am, who I am in Christ. Um, so I would say that as a step parent, just go into it expecting the best expecting that it's going to be loving, expecting that there's not going to be a lot of rebellion. Um, you can even that's speak really, that over it yourself. Amen. That really, going into it expecting those things uh, sets you up for exactly what you're expecting. That's huge. And then uh, we actually, Keith moved out, and we had five years of empty nesters, and then... Uh, Oh, gosh. Anyway, then we just, uh, Selena went on a missions trip down to, to Haiti, and she found, uh, she called me up. I was on a, a, a trip, and, and long story short, you're welcome, but she's, uh, she says, honey, I, we were thinking about adopting. I found two children here. What do you think? And I said, sure, why not? And then she calls me back the next day. Well, we got another one. Yeah, and I said, sure, throw another shrimp on the Barbie, whatever, we'll do this thing. Well, when we, when, we brought them, when we brought them home, it was almost two years later when the earthquakes hit Haiti, and uh, we, we brought them into our house, and then it was, it was insane. And we had a, she had a, that baby girl that, that had never been disciplined in her life and suddenly had to be. And we had the, the boys who didn't understand why we in the world we'd want to uh, not just let their little girl do whatever, whatever they wanted. And so their feelings were hurt. We had a lot of things stirred up and a lot of uh, angst and, and, a lot, and all those things. And the way we dealt with it was just by really pulling back, making sure that we were together on who we were and who we were in Christ and what we could, we could trust him for. And then we, as a united front, came in and just loved those children. But I will say that we did so many things wrong. Uh, it, no parent does it perfectly, and I don't care what they say. Facebook is a liar. <laughs> uh, we, did, we made many mistakes, um, but oftentimes we apologize for them, and we really trusted God to make up the difference. That's the key. I love that, and uh, truly there is grace in the space for a blended family when you put Amen. the Lord, when you give it to God. Right? He can take your mistakes and turn them into, if I'm a preacher, I'll say miracles, right? But he can take your mistakes and you can learn from them. And I would even add to what you're saying is you go in with those expectations looking for things that are good and pointing them out instead of going into a relationship looking for things to be bad and pointing that out instead. I wanted to toss it over to Dave and Nancy. Uh, you pastor young adults. And so many of them are single, and you once were single as well. What are some of the greatest lessons a single person could take in their life? Would one of you want to answer that question, take in their life on, on how to survive maybe the single years, possibly even if they're expecting to get married one day? I would say that when you're single, just guard your heart. And what I mean by that in a practical way is 
don't always be on the hunt for who's going to be your spouse and checking every person out that you see because what will happen is you're going to train your heart to do that and then after you're married, you're still going to be doing that. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be, you know, in you know, adulterer or whatever. It just means that now you're married and you want to have eyes just for your spouse. So when you're single, God's going to bring you that person. Keep praying for them and pray for them like they exist and they're an actual person out there. And don't be looking around all the time and checking everybody out that you see. Well, that kind of comes with the mindset too of what, what I wanted to say of like, don't prepare for marriage when you meet someone. Be preparing now when, when you're single and um, as a as a guy, I'll speak directly to the guys, but this also translates over to the girls. But specifically speaking to the guys, you need to be able to provide, protect, and pastor your family. So look at your finances. Look at how you are in the Word of God because, yes, we are pastors up here, and we're called to lead the church, but you're called to pastor your family. And that's super important that you know that now. And um, so whether or not, you know, however you see yourself, you need to see yourself as, you know, I'm going to be the spiritual leader of my home. I need to be uh, financially sound, and I need to be able to protect my home. And and that is what a man of God should be looking to, to pursue. You know, people say, like, cardio, lifting, and a diet. Well, it's, you know, pastoring, protecting, and providing for your home. I love that. Um, I, I would even add there just a thought, how do I survive uh, business? How do I survive church and family and put all of that in there? Um, and that's really hard right now, guys, especially in this day and age that we live. How do we turn a church digital? Uh, how would you turn your business to actually work in today's day and age in this moment? And, and I'll just put this out there. You've got to put the mission and the goals in front of you and say, what's the most important things in my life? You know, for me, the most important thing is my relationship with God. The second most important thing is my relationship with my wife and people, right? I put her first, but I'm going to put my children into that category of those relationships. And so I don't put business above people. I don't put business above my wife. Uh, business exists to support my family. Church is part of the mission that I have uh, to reach people for Jesus. Ultimately, it isn't just to give myself a title, like I, I'm good at this, or I want to be this, or want to be that. No, the church is part of the mission. Are we going to reach people? Are we going to reach one person at a time? Are we going to be here to glorify God? And so I constantly put that mission in front of me and say, how do I balance the two? Well, for me, my family's first, right? I put them first and then everything else supports that. Like my job supports that, that sort of thing. So I would just add that in there today. Um, Brian, I want to talk to you and Emily um, just about marriage. How do you keep marriage alive? You know, before the COVID-19 crisis, um, we probably all were busier than we are now with things in the evening. You know, it's like soccer practice, baseball practice, volleyball practice, softball practice, whatever, dance, you know, hip-hop, jazz dance, whatever, right? We're doing all this stuff. We're trying to throw in marriage. Now we're kind of like, you know, we're, you know, we're all together all the time. What are some just simple principles that you could take into a marriage, no matter what season, to keep the romance alive, to keep the love for one another there. Something that we did last night that we like to do periodically is now that our kids are older, they're all like able to get themselves ready for bed. Um, when they were younger, we had time together after they went to bed, but now they basically go to bed when we go to bed, or at least the teenagers do. And so we don't get that time together. And so what we've started to do is when we need that time together, we'll tell the kids, get your, go hop in the shower and brush your teeth, get ready for bed, and we'll go out on a 20-minute walk. And we'll just talk. We'll get to kind of just decompress, talk about the day. Um, and it's just been something that really works for us now that our kids are, you know, in and approaching the teenage years. Yeah, and I may or may not, like, to keep the uh, fire burning, I may or may not forget a towel when I go to the shower sometimes. Just saying. I may need help drying oh, off. Oh, snap. <laughs> My bad. I got Has you. Has that ever worked? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't answer that. Don't, don't just answer stop that. it right there. It doesn't work, but he's still trying. Anyway. Um, oh, it works. It works. <laughs> It Jessica, works. what, you know, if I'm going to be a good husband or you're going to be a good wife or a good mother, did it get hot in here? Anyway, um, what's something simple that we could put into our life just to be better parents, better business owners, you know, better whatever, followers of Christ? What, what does that look like for you? 
I would not be a good wife or a good mom or a good human if I did not spend time with the Lord every single day. Um, not to be legalistic about it, but just I, I know the days that I have not taken the time to get in the Word in the morning. For, it's, for me, it's in the morning. They're just, the days are harder. You know, there's still grace in the space, but I, there's a lot more grace when I've put that first. And so I try every morning to get up and read the chapter of the day, whatever the chapter is for morning breath. I read that and I do SOAP, which is scripture, observation, application, prayer. And uh, sometimes I'll read some other books that are just like not self-help, but like Christian-based good books along with that time and just spend some time in, in the SOAP is time for prayer. And that really grounds my day. It starts my day right. And it really does help me lead out of that overflow in the way that I am a wife and a mom and a human. Yeah. And you're incredible. My wife's incredible at reading. She loves to read. She's, she's not just disciplined. She actually really enjoys it. And, and honestly, I don't. I'm not a reader. I'm a listener. I love to listen to stuff. And so, you know, how I got kind of hooked on reading my Bible every day was the verse of the day on you verse, And, you know, you kind of feel a little cheesy. Like, you're like, well, I'm just going to look at the verse of the day, <laughs> whatever. No way. I mean, I'll, you take the verse of the day, you take that for the rest of the day, meditate, think about on it, dwell on it. Even just for a minute, you'd just be so surprised what will come up later in the day that you'll go back to that verse and you go, I'm so glad I put that in there. It's, it's so easy today with technology. You turn your alarm off, open your Bible app from you version, and go, verse of the day. Boom. Next, next thing you know, you're doing devotions and you're sharing them with people and it would, it'll truly change your life. Here's, here's, this is the video, guys. This is just some stuff to help you. Check out some of our other videos available here on being single, being married, raising children, and even forgiveness. They're all available for you right now. Check those out. Thanks for being a part of this. Pro tips for relationships from East Coast Christian Center. Check out our weekend services on our website or on our Facebook page. God bless you guys. We love you. We'll see you next time.